I bought this manuscript in the mid-90s through the family from the great-great-nephew of Jane Austen. And at the time, it became clear that there was a lot more work needed to be done on the various hands in the manuscript. And strange to say, I put it away after a while and just actually really rather forgot about it. And uh, in lockdown, I was going through some material and some boxes and revisited it and made some very exciting discoveries and um, new light was shed on it. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Andrew Taylor from Vogue Rare Books. Well, Simon brought these uh, two manuscripts to me and had indicated which ones were thought to be, which songs were thought to be in Jane's, na in Jane's handwriting. And looking at them, it was immediately obvious that these were in a highly distinctive hand. Jane wrote music in a very neat way. She had a very distinctive way of writing out the bass clef. Um, and even for an inexperienced um, musician, you can read, uh, read her musical notation um, absolutely clearly. It's very lucid, very transparent. Um, and this was actually noted by a member of her family. Caroline, her niece, uh, wrote a diary entry talking about her Aunt Jane and saying what a good musician she was and how beautifully she wrote out her music manuscripts. So beautifully, in fact, that it was as though they were printed. The four songs that we have here are a, a really nice cross-section. There's a song called The Cheshire Tragedy, which is in fact written by a composer from Norwich, which is, is nice for us up here in Norfolk. We've heard, um, we've heard No Riches from His Scanty Store sung for us. And at the end, there's a wonderful rousing hymn by Martin Madden called Jehovah's Awful Throne. So it's a wonderful mixture of the sort of songs that would have been played in a musical afternoon or a musical evening in the late 18th and the early 19th century in the Austin family. <laughs> 